and welcome to the Big Fiction Energy Podcast. We're Dan. And Danny. And Tim. And Dan. Wait. We're here to tell stories. Yay! Uh, we decided to make this podcast to share ideas and stories with fiction lovers. Uh, there's lots in the pipeline. Uh, we chose to start with one of Dan's, my uh, young adult fantasy novels. This one is Lanny, the Girl Without Fear. Um, the plan is to do uh, one chapter per episode, um, and then we're going to have some kind of like discussion. We'll have maybe a little bit of banter intros in the beginning, some kind of like director's notes uh, here and there after the story. We can answer um, listener questions. If you have questions, you can email us. Yeah, if we get listeners, that would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Let's not, let's not set the bar too high. <laughs> but, you know, just email and say hi. What's the email address, Dan? Uh, right now, well, maybe I'll get more official one in the future, but as of right now, it's, uh, let's do icedan22 at gmail.com. I-C-E-D-A-N 22 at gmail.com. Um, so today in this intro, we thought we'd start with a little bit about us as the readers, um, a little bit about the world Lanny lives in. And then we'll get to chapter one. That's called Falling. Uh, Tim, why don't you start? A little bit about special guest Tim. Uh, so my name's Tim. Uh, I did not write this uh, book. Um, I'm also uh, not Dan. Named Dan. <laughs> yeah. That's, Everybody are, else in this podcast is. Those are normally the first two things people point out. They're like, you don't look like you wrote a book. Or... That you're named Dan, and that is correct. That's what makes you special, though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. All right, um, what do you got? All right, I am Danny. I also didn't write this book, but I helped edit it, and I was a beta reader for it. And your name is Dan, sort of. Sort of Dan, and I have the same last name as Dan, because I'm his wife, so that's fun. Oh, yeah. I'm also not Dan's wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also you should probably that. point that out. Uh, no uh, polyamorous relationships None of here. that. Not up in here. Um, but I am a high school English teacher, so I guess that makes me qualified to do things with books. So, yeah. And I love podcasts. Holy cow, do I love a good podcast. Or a bad podcast, really. I'm not super picky about my podcast. <laughs> Hopefully or bad. this falls in the first category. Right, this will be a good podcast. Let's hope. Um, so I am Dan. I did write this book, actually. You wrote a book. Um, this one was... I've got a couple things in the works. Maybe if this is something that takes off, we'll do other ones. I got a superhero one that I think I love a lot. This is fantasy. Um, but this was one I started a couple years ago with a NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, as a challenge. I only got like 13,000 words in. You're supposed to write 50,000 words in a month. Didn't go so hot, but... I really liked where the story was going, so over the following year, it took me. I finished it and then spent a bunch of time editing it, and I've had a couple people kind of beta read and edit it, help uh, make it better, and we decided that this would be a great way to share the story with people, because I love it a lot. Um, and so podcasts are so hot right now. Podcasts are hot right now. Yeah. And I figured... The internet, too, is really up and coming. You know, I've it's heard of that. It's going to be huge. Revolutionary. <laughs> That's, I feel, the thing that friends talk about sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I asked Danny to voice Lanny and a few other characters, and then I said, you know what, let's get my friend Tim. Yeah, I shoe, shoehorned myself in there as hard as I could. <laughs> yeah. I said, hey, you want to voice somebody? And he said, are there any orcs? And I said, you know what, there is an orc you can voice. <laughs> that was all I needed. Literally how that conversation went. Oh, and he asked for 30%, and I said, I don't know 30% of what, but you can voice an orc. <laughs> 30% of the voices, that's yeah. what you get to do. Yeah. yeah. Or Almost 100% exactly. of the orcs. Yeah. Not, well, not quite, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded a couple episodes at this point, um, just trying to get a little bit ahead. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Lanny's world. Um, which obviously it's not our world, being a fantasy world. Uh, the world is actually called Andorra. Um, and she lives in a point in history of the world where pretty much the good guys lost, basically. Uh, the world is controlled by fear, and everybody lives either in walled cities or walled towns, or Lainey doesn't really know anything else other than people live in giant walled cities that are actually, to our standards, relatively futuristic, at least like modern technology, some places advanced, um, but yeah, she, 
doesn't like it. <laughs> That's kind of what it comes down to. It's stifling. Yes. She is very much a free spirit who wants to be able to do what she wants to do. Uh, in this world, uh, obviously there's orcs, as we mentioned before. There's goblins that are kind of the same thing, but not really. Um, and there are another... Um, various races of people that are collectively called primals that are like half animal people like one of our main characters you'll meet very early on is brutus who is a minotaur so you know like bull human um balloon <laughs> <Baloomin. laughs> um there is a character in like the history of the world named bubalis because he is a like centaur that's half bison instead of horse, ah. who actually think he looks super cool. I love him, um, but I took his name from like a like family name of the cow of the the bison species. So like something like that's not too far off from a name you might hear. Um, You're such a science teacher, right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't mention that. Yeah. Uh, as part of about me, I'm also a teacher. Teach high school, and middle school, life sciences. Um, so whenever I make up different creatures and things, I love to go look at the scientific names and use that, just because I think it's cool. Um, but yeah, so this story of Lanny, um, she lives in the world that's controlled by fear. But obviously, the title is the girl without fear. Um, she does not experience fear at all, at least not how a normal person would. And it's about her journey through the world, learning more about the world she lives in, um, because she doesn't know much about it in the beginning, and she gets to learn all about that, and meet different people, and cool stuff happens, and there's robots, and fire swords, and all kinds of stuff. And orcs. There are orcs. Yes. Um, there's an orc that has a bar. A business owner orc. I mean, that's like the first five minutes, so I'm not really giving anything away, but there is a, a small business owner orc who has a bar establishment. Sounds... Respectable, probably. <laughs> um, so you kind of see, uh, with this fantasy story, I, I tried to get away from the typical things. It included a lot of typical things, like orcs. But I tried to, to put a spin on it that hopefully is more interesting. Um, the structure of the story, I think, is a little bit different than other fantasy stories, maybe? Um I guess it depends on how many fantasy stories you've read. True. It is classic hero's journey, though. Yes. Classic. I didn't want to go too out there. Um, But looking at the time on our recording thing here, this thing shows long enough. Um, So I'm going to say thanks for checking this out to listen to the first chapter and hope you join us back for the next, I think, 19. I'm pretty sure there's 20 chapters in this. I don't know. I didn't write it. Yes, it did. Um... (laughs) Uh, So enjoy Lanny the Girl Without Fear. The entire world knew only fear, except one young woman. Lanny was falling through the sky, smiling at that exhilarating feeling of being free, if only for a few seconds before she had to ready herself to land safely. Lanny fell, her short black hair that shifted to bright red at the ends, whipped behind her head, her eyes closed, feeling the nothingness around her. She fell with her arms outstretched, though that wasn't even as far as the geese she had read about, almost as if she were flying. Laney fell, stories and stories. Windows flew past, full of scared faces that Laney did not see, did not care about. Laney fell, and it was the best part of her day, now that she had broken out of school again. It was only a matter of time before Brutus found her and made her go home, but for now, she fell. Laney opened her eyes and saw it was time to prepare for landing. Obviously, if she hit the ground like this, she would be splattered all over the sidewalk, but she knew what she was doing. Lainey reached out, not very far, and grabbed hold of a flag from the fifth floor of her school's building. The flag was dark purple, with the sneering face of the mascot of her school, the Gaul Ghoul, printed in black. The fabric ripped and slowed her descent. She twisted in the air to use her momentum to swing back up, landing with her toes on the windowsill of the fourth floor. From here was an easy drop down, her heavy black boots slamming into the pavement with a loud thump. She immediately took off running, her knees absorbing the impact. Passersby recoiled with shock. One took out his digits slate to call for the mongers, terrified of whatever just fell from the sky. Laney ran with a smile on her face. Running was almost as good as falling. When she was running, even with her short legs, very few people or goblins could catch her. She had always noticed in exercise classes that even the taller students, which were most, had a hard time keeping up with her during sprints. Laney ran down the sidewalk to the nearest stairwell down to the dregs. Most of the surfacers were scared of the dregs, but Laney preferred it. 
She tore off her school uniform top to reveal her typical white t-shirt, stuffed it into her backpack, and skipped down the steps to the dregs, where the light from the sun above did not reach. As she made her way down the, slope, the steps, a massive figure stepped around the entrance to the alley of the stairwell. The figure was nearly as wide as the alley and stomped its way towards the stairs, grunting with barely restrained anger with each step of its cloven hooves. Hey, a jork. Laney cheerfully called as she took a seat at the dark bar. I'll have a sweet nectar today. What else would you have here, girl? An olive green face full of teeth and tusks asked back. Jork towered over the clean metal bar while he prepared Laney her drink. The orc was a massive example of his species, his shoulders nearly as wide as Laney was tall, his long tusks jutting out of his jaw in every direction. The spines along the top of his head were impressive as well, all except the broken front one, but never ask about that, not if you want to keep your own teeth in your head. Ain't it school time, girl? Jork set the mug of purple liquid down in front of Laney with a large green hand. <laughs> Maybe for the other kids. Laney answered after taking a huge swallow of the drink. I didn't feel like being cooped up anymore. Took a dive out of the bathroom window. Laney wiped her mouth with the back of her hand. How far up was that? Only 45 stories. I've gone higher before, but it was the only window I could get open today. Laney took another swig of the sweet nectar. Would not but your boots to land on? Jork managed to look surprised and impressed past his maw. Well, there was a flag that helps me out. I can't go higher than six or seven stories without something to slow me down. Girl, you was as tough as an orc. If you ain't lying, I'll get you the next sweet nectar on the house. You know me better than that, Jork. I don't lie. You don't always tell the truth, though. A deep voice interrupted the conversation from the doorway of the nearly empty establishment. Time for you to come with me. The large figure took a step into the room and Laney leapt from her stool away from it. Thanks for the drink, Jork. Laney called over her shoulder as she made her way to the back of the room. I'll take you up on that freebie next time. Laney knocked over a few stools, making it harder for her assailant to catch up to her. Jork yelled from behind the bar not to break anything and returned to cleaning mugs. Laney didn't look over her shoulder. She knew if she did, the figure would be closer than she would like. He was always faster than she thought he should be, considering his size. Laney made it to the back room, leaping onto a pile of boxes to a window out to the dregs proper. Just as she got her arm out the small opening, she felt something tighten around her ankle. She yelped in surprise as she was yanked back and tossed unceremoniously onto the floor, landing hard on her backside. She looked up to see the huge figure standing over her, his wide frame blocking the single bulb for light in this room. Glad to see you're getting your education. Oh, Brutus, you know I'll learn more down here than in those stuffy classrooms anyway. Laney got off the floor and dusted herself off. Why are you running away from me? You know I'm not going to hurt you. As Brutus stepped away from Laney to give her room to stand, the light shined on his features. His hulking shoulders supported a bull's head complete with long horns jutting straight out the sides. A small tail switched back and forth from behind him. His tight black shirt reflected no light but made his muscular build obvious. Ugh. Laney walked with Brutus out of the storeroom. Because you'll make me go back to school. School's over for the day. Brutus retorted without looking at her. Then worse, you'll make me go home. That's my job. Brutus answered factually. Jork, next time tell her to get back to school. Hey, a paying customer is a paying customer. Jork smiled. Tonight, I'll come back and we'll decide who the better customer is then. I'm sure I can offer you more to keep her out of, the, out of here than she actually spends here. Jork shrugged and held out a hand. Laney dropped a few coins in to pay for her drink. The two smiled at each other and Laney followed Brutus out of Jork's pub. As the two made their way through the dregs, people couldn't help but stare. The pair could not have been more different physically. Brutus was more than head and shoulders taller than Lanny, and was about as wide as Jork. Her waist was as wide as his bicep. Brutus had his held his mass always just behind Lanny and to the left, so he could always keep an eye on her, which he had to do for so many reasons. Lanny, in contrast, was a slight figure, not skinny in the way the billboards make girls think they should be, but lean with her own muscle. Laney had been trained by Brutus from as far back as she could remember to defend herself. Her parents found it prudent to know how to keep oneself safe in this world, especially for a small girl such as Laney. Laney and Brutus walked through the dregs, the undercity of Gaul. The sun never reached down here, and the air had almost nowhere to go. Even residential areas, mostly made up of orcs, goblins, and primals, were bare metal and wiring. No thought was given to the aesthetics, except for places of business like Jork's. 
Vents were constantly spewing out vapors into the streets and grime built up everywhere. The, ro the whole underbelly of the city was dark, dank, and dirty. Lainey slipped in a puddle of grease, but Brutus, with that watchful eye, was able to catch her arm with ease. Thanks, Lainey said with a smile. What would I do without you? Probably die a painful death in the dregs. It was rhetorical. I know, but I'm serious. You take too many chances. Do you know- Do not ask me if I know how dangerous it is down here. Of course I do. That's why I bring this. Lainey pulled a dagger from her backpack, revealing a long white blade of ancient design. Its edge was still keen, still terribly sharp. Brutus tried to snatch it away, but Lainey was too fast. She skipped ahead a couple of steps and sheathed the brilliant blade. If her parents knew you stole that again... Well, they never use it. I think it needs to get out of that cage once in a while. It's it's a case, not a cage. It's not a living thing, Lanny. Some days it feels like it. It's almost like it calls to me to let it out. Lanny offered the weapon to the Minotaur. Here, feel it. It's warm. Brutus took the dagger, the Tonto to be precise, and it was warm. Warmer than it should have been from Lanny holding it briefly. Huh. Was all Brutus said, and handed it back. Make sure you're back in the case as soon as we get back. I don't want to get blamed. You won't get blamed. They'll assume it was me. Brutus looked at Lainey as she said this with his eyebrows raised. Okay, you're right. They'll probably blame you first. I don't know why they employ you, but seem to hate you. You're asking the wrong person there, kid. If I knew, I'd tell you. At least most of the job is pretty good. You're a brat, though. Brutus gave Lainey a playful shove and almost knocked her to the ground. She play playfully punched him back in the arm as... And as she cocked her arm back to give him another slug that he would barely feel, another hand grabbed her arm. You don't want to be doing that, Hierizer. A goblin face peered from the darkness. His yellow teeth, long pointed ears, and head spines gave him a demonic appearance. Or maybe it was just that the fact that he was a goblin, a demon from the void. Goblins were much smaller than orcs, but were structurally similar. Their skin was the same range of gray to green. They had claws instead of fingernails and sharp teeth. The goblin that grabbed Lanny was a typical example of his race, about as tall as Lanny and skinny, making his head look even larger than it already was. Primals are known to be a dangerous bunch. Come with old Grobin here and I'll treat you right. Lanny tried to snatch her arm away, but the goblin, who was her size, was stronger than he looked. Lanny twisted her lip into a sneer and reached for her dagger, which she had stored back in the pack before hitting Brutus. Before she could reach it, though, she heard a noise that was awfully familiar down in the dregs. A blue light filled the area, and the eyes of the goblin wi widened just before a huge shock baton crashed into his skull, snapping off a number of his spines. The goblin slumped to the floor, still breathing, but barely. This is the difficult part of the job. Now go. There are always more scavengers. Laney sprinted ahead of Brutus towards the closest stairwell, taking the steps two at a time. I wasn't afraid of him. I could have taken care of it myself with my Tonto. Lainey said through crossed arms once they both got back to the surface. The sun was low in the sky, casting the alleys between the tall buildings into deep shadows. The day was getting late. Lainey knew her parents would be worried about her safety soon. Even here in Gaul, everyone constantly worried about the monsters roaming about the world, the unspeakable horrors beyond their wall, some inside it. Lainey hated the wall, hated being trapped here. Gaul was big enough that she had only ever seen a tiny fraction of it, but any limits to her wanderlust were too many. I know, but we're going home. Brutus gently turned Lainey around and gave her a shove in the back to get her going. Lainey looked back at the stairway, wondering if she really could have taken care of herself without Brutus. It seemed like down there for every jork who was just trying to make a living, there's always a grobbin trying to take the life of someone else. All right, so there you have it, chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter one. We did it. We did a thing. We did it. One whole chapter. The whole first chapter. Yep. And not even like part of the chapter. Right. One take. We did it. Yeah, we've learned since recording the first chapter not to do it that way. Yep. But <laughs> yep. it's done. It's there. Uh, let us know what you think. I'd love to hear anything even if it's you guys suck i mean i won't like to read that but i will appreciate that you took the time to let us know that we suck yeah i i feel like people don't take the time to tell people that they suck enough especially, especially on the internet especially yeah. if you're not on the internet, on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. that's the best yeah. time to do it right that keyboard courage you know <laughs> just whew, let it go if you liked it even better 
Right. Let us know. Yeah. Rate, review, subscribe. Yes. You know. Uh, mm. I'm gonna assume this is gonna be on iTunes because most pod that's where most podcasts we're start. throwing it out everywhere. Uh, definitely share it, like it, whatever. Write a review. I know most platforms. That's the biggest deal is a reviews on it. Um, find us on Facebook, on Twitter. Bonus points if you can leave a review all with emojis. Oh, that'd be fun. And not any actual words. Yes. Yep. But not using fruits or vegetables. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's getting tough now. I don't think there's any orc or goblin emojis. This is kid friendly. Right. I mean, it's only 2020. Yeah, I don't just want a bunch of eggplants. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let's see. So social media stuff uh, on Facebook. It, uh, if you do facebook.com slash Dan Cole author is my page for that on Twitter you can search for Dan Cole or I think my Twitter handle is kind of weird it's ice Dan underscore HDH which is short for hundred dollar heroes which is the other property we'll be doing eventually probably um, but yeah, if you check me out there that'd be great uh, Dan Cole author.com is the the website home for the podcast you can buy merch there is some merch yeah totally yeah. I'm actually wearing a merch sweatshirt at the moment yeah Big Fiction Energy, BB. <laughs> I think I think they can probably hear how much better your voice quality is while wearing your merch. Yeah. Well, I just so if I you, felt like I couldn't do it without. Well, I right. have a sweatshirt with my logo and stuff on. I've got to wear it, right? Right. Well, so like if you're out there and you're thinking about starting your own podcast. It'll do better if you're wearing some big fiction energy merch. Statistics, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I fully Without agree. A doubt. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a great idea. Well, so that's at dancoleauthor.com. <laughs> head over. Check it out. Um, so but ask your parents first. Yes. Oh, <laughs> only if you're over 18 can you use a credit card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, chapter one, some of the issues that we ran into, you know, just giving you, like, a behind-the-scenes take. Besides me um, stumbling over words, because apparently I can't read sometimes. You know, you, te- you teach science. It's <laughs> not like you teach <laughs> to reading. To be fair, you weren't wearing your sweatshirt when we first right. started. Yeah. So yes. we restarted it, True. and then it turned out very True. well. Um, doing voices when you're reading, like, a script-type thing, um, that can be pretty challenging. And then having to go back and listen to what you sound like when you're recorded not great it's awful it makes you feel bad as a person <laughs> <laughs> everybody hates the sound of their own voice really, on a recording yeah. so everybody why, so then why is podcasting so popular because we don't hate other people's voices that's apparently true. like i don't know what those people actually sound like well that's why podcasts probably usually have a separate editor because uh. if the people in it edited it they would just cut out all their own parts yeah i've edited this episode to put the special effects and sounds and music in and stuff and i hate listening to myself narrate which makes me wonder are the people gonna hate it too but i hope not i just don't like my own voice as right. everybody doesn't like their own isn't that a thing though where like the voice that you hear recorded is not how it actually sounds to other people I don't. I've heard that what you hear recorded sounds different than what you hear because somebody told me one time is because of how your ears perceive the sound of your voice, like being all in your own head, basically. Science. And I was like, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense because <laughs> sounds... somebody's voice doesn't sound different if they're thirty feet away from you. That sounds made up enough to be true, right? Yeah. So there's there's probably a... I can't remember who told me that. I think it may have been Red Jess, <sighs> <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Either, regardless, no one likes the sound of their own voice in recording. But um, we hope you liked the sound of our voices in the recording. And yeah. not hopefully you like the sound of our acted voices. Yeah. Especially Graben. Right. Graben was great. Uh, and just make sure that you're mean to us if you want to be mean to us, but also not mean if you don't also not want to be not mean to us. You know what? <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. Here's the good news. But I agree. I mean either. <laughs> <laughs> Karma. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what else uh, would this this obviously that we don't have too much of the story so far. A uh, little introduction to Lanny herself, um, a little introduction to Brutus and their relationship together. Um, very soon we'll see a little bit more of other people in Lanny's lives in the next chapter uh, coming up. 
Uh, we met Jork, of course. Yeah. Fan favorite Jork. Jorking it up. Um, I say fan favorite because the, the, the people that have read this so far all love Jork. He's the best. I mean, he's an orc. There's not a lot not to like. Right. All right. He's got spikes coming out of his head. Mm-hmm. He's got... Don't ask about that one tooth, though. Not, right. No, it's the, the front spike oh, on his head. Right, Don't yeah. ask about that. Don't broken ask. One. Uh, yeah, they got big tusks and long teeth. I kept that similar to orcs. I mean, that's just pretty much anything that someone needs. Yeah. Really. All right. And they're big and strong. Yeah. But relatively, Jork is not to other orcs. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah, he's classified as a small orc, right? Yeah, we don't know. A that smork. Yet. Not in chapter one. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't smork. know if we said this, but we're recording the. We recorded the intro, and now we're recording this kind of outro weeks, maybe even months after we recorded episode one. We just finished recording episode five. Um. So we're getting a little mixed up here. That's okay. I don't think. Not, not like we're giving anything major away. Um. Like what else did you um, stuck out to you, Tim? Um, <clears throat> you know, there was an orc. He had a bar. <laughs> there was also a goblin who did not have a bar. Um, no, he and was infinitely more mean. Yeah, he was which, mean. He didn't have a which bar. really goes to show um, the benefit to your perceived personality that you can have by starting a small business. <laughs> Both in the real world and in the fantasy world. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. And Dora, what else do you think? I think that's I think that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's we've about um, exhausted what we're we've got for today. So um, hopefully you guys will check in next time. Chapter two is consequences, which um, you have to see what those consequences are. Consequences for what? What? Who? I don't know. Huh? Could be Me? anything. Could be a boat. It could be a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much we've always wanted one of those. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. One of my favorite recurring jokes. Um, so let's say, other than that, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll see you next time. We need to come up with a sign-off. I haven't thought of that. Um, big Fiction Energy. Big Fiction Energy. Big Fiction Energy? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.